Hello, this is Professor Dan Kernler again of Elgin Community College. This is another video in my statistics series. In this video, we're going to talk about the distribution of the sample proportion. All right, let's get to it. Like usual, we're going to introduce this concept by way of an example. Um, I have a national survey here about the proportion of individuals who are registered voters who support different political parties. And we're going to compare these to our immigrant database, Children of Immigrants. I'll put that link in the description. Let's focus for the sake of the example on the percent that are Democrats. Now, if we look at our sample and look at the proportion from that sample, it's about 0.339. Um, the specifics here, it's 1,098 over the total 3,238. And the notation we have for this is P with a little like carrot symbol over a little hat, like P hat is how we say it. Not, not like hat, like hat, but P hat is how we say it with that little triangle over the top. So that's the sample proportion, 0.339. We have our comparison population proportion from the other survey, that's 32%. Now these are clearly different. The question is, like how different are they? Is this really unusual? Is this, are they just close enough to say they're the same? Or is it a big enough difference for us to say that maybe they are different? Well, we could find the probability of a sample proportion of 0.339 if the true proportion is 0.32. The problem is we'd have to know something about the distribution. Is it normally distributed? Is it skewed right? Is it skewed left? So we need to dive a little bit deeper to get some more information. Let's say we had 10 individuals and we wanna know, are they a Democrat or not? Well, that's a binomial distribution. It's a binomial distribution, n is 10, and then p would be 0.32. The probability distribution ends up looking something like this. That's for n equal 10, p equal 0.32. Well, I mean, we have more than that, right? We have more than 10. What if we, what if we do 20? Something like this. And do 50. Now, this is kind of interesting here. You should be noticing something about the shape of this distribution. It's pretty bell-shaped, right? What about if we had n equals the whole 32, 38 from our sample? Well, that distribution is very condensed. If we zoom in a little bit, look at the shape there. Look at how perfectly bell-shaped that looks. So now we have some information about the binomial distribution. If we had 3,238 individuals, how would their binomial probability be distributed? And that's not our proportion, but the binomial distribution of the number of individuals who say they are a Democrat is certainly bell-shaped at this sample size. One question you might have is, under what conditions will the distribution of that count, the number of individuals, be bell-shaped or approximately bell-shaped? Um, there's no perfect criteria here, but one widely used criteria is if your sample size times your proportion times one minus your proportion, uh, if that's at least 10, then your distribution should be approximately normal. Now this is a binomial distribution, so if it is approximately normal, the mean should be n times p, that's from the binomial distribution, we've talked about that already in this series. The standard deviation, this is normal, so there should be about three standard deviations, and that standard deviation, we have this kind of rarely used formula, but it's the standard deviation of a binomial random variable, square root of n times p times one minus p. Now these, these are for binomial random variables, but we don't have a binomial random variable, we don't have a count, we have a proportion. So we have to take those counts and the information about the counts and then divide by n to make it a proportion. Well, we need our n. Remember, this was from our sample proportion. It was 1,098 over 3,238. That 3,238, that's going to be our n that we're going to use here. The proportion that we're assuming the distribution follows is the 32%. Now, we have a different sample proportion, but again, we're wondering how our sample proportion compares to the population proportion. So we're going to use that 32% as the population proportion. You go back to our mean and standard deviation for the binomial distribution. Now remember, we are looking at a sample proportion, x over n, the count over the total sample size. So for our mean, we want the mean of those sample proportions. It's not gonna be the mean count, but it'll be the mean count over the sample size. So mu sub x over n. Well, we know that mu sub x, that's n times p. So the mean of the sample proportions 
shockingly, should be the same as the population proportion. So if you take a bunch of different samples, the mean sample proportion from all of your samples should be the same as the population proportion. That makes sense. On average, you should get the, the sample proportion should be the same as your overall proportion. All right, what about standard deviation? We wanna find the standard deviation of these sample proportions. We'll do the same thing. We'll take the standard deviation of the counts, the binomial random variable, and then divide by n. We're gonna to have to do a little algebra here. So we've got the square root of n times p times one minus p all over n. We can make n the same as the square root of n squared. Now they're both under a square root. We can combine them and then simplify the n's. And we have this not intuitive result that the standard deviation of the sample proportions is the square root of p times one minus p all over n. If you take a lot of different samples, your sample proportion will be different. It's going to vary. The standard deviation of that sample proportion is this guy. So make a note of these, write that down. You're gonna to need to want that, have that for a reference as we go through these examples and as you do your homework and answer these questions. So to summarize, for a sample proportion, the mean sample proportion is the population proportion and the standard deviation of the sample proportion is square root of p times one minus p all over n. If there's some conditions here though, remember, if n times p times one minus p is at least 10, then this will be approximately normally distributed with that mean in the middle, p, and then the standard deviation is that square root of p times one minus p all over n. All right, let's go back to our example. We have our sample proportion, 0.339, and we're wondering, okay, that's pretty close to the 32, but how different is it? How is it? Is it unlikely? Is it unusual? Is it super common? How unlikely is it? We need a probability. Well, we know if n times p times one minus p is at least 10, then our distribution should follow the normal distribution. Let's check it. n times p times one minus p, Plug in our values, we have n3238. The p, the population proportion is 0.32. That's what we're comparing with. That's what we're assuming is true. We could calculate that, we get 704.6. Clearly we have met that criteria. That means our distribution will be that normal distribution. And calculating the mean and standard deviation, plugging in all of our values, we have the mean should be 0.32. The standard deviation, doing that computation, should be about 0.008198. Now, it might seem a little excessive. Why am I writing so many digits? Um, it has to do with how these normal probabilities are calculated. Remember, normal, the z is x minus mu divided by sigma. So when you divide by a number, you don't want to round it very much because it can affect your results. So write lots of digits out here for the standard deviation of p hat. Let's calculate a probability then. We know our distribution. We should have 0.32 in the middle, and then our standard deviation is about that 0.008198. Our sample proportion is 0.339. If we kind of figure out where those standard deviations would be, we can see where the 0.339 is, kind of far out there. Let's calculate the probability of being to the right. We'll do this in StatCrunch. It's a normal probability question. Same thing as always, stat, Calculators, normal. Plug in our mean, that's 0.32. Our standard deviation, that's that 0.008198. We wanna find the probability of being to the right of 0.339, hit compute, and we get 0.01. Here's what this means. This means that if we were to repeat this and do a different random sample of children of immigrants, et cetera, et cetera, the likelihood of getting a sample proportion of 0.339 if the actual proportion is 0.32 is 0.01. So only one out of 100 samples will have a sample proportion this high or higher. So it is pretty rare. What that means is that the proportion who are Democrats for children of immigrants is likely slightly higher than the national population overall. Not much higher, it was only about 2% higher, but it is statistically looks to be higher than what the national proportion is because the, the likelihood of getting a sample proportion that high is very unlikely, right? Only one out of 100 uh, samples would have a sample proportion that high. 
Okay, that is it for this video. I know the sampling distribution sections are usually pretty challenging. You may need to watch this video a couple times, maybe do some other research, but I hope this at least got you on a good start. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more of these, you can subscribe, hit the bell to get notified. This video is part of a whole series and the rest of these will be coming out. Also, thank you to the Elgin Community College Board of Trustees who approved my sabbatical for the spring 2021 semester. And that's when I was able to film, edit, produce, and upload all of these videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.